Hi everyone, um, it's Friday the 29th of January and this is our topic lesson for today. Um, so we know our big question is what makes a good leader? So I'm going to get started straight away. So today you just need your English book and a pencil or a pen. Um, there is a video in this lesson as well, so I've put the link to that in the description for the lesson on YouTube as well. So last lesson we looked at Roman settlements and we designed and may you may have made your own as well. So I've just got a couple of examples there to remind you of what you hopefully did. Um, I do like this one with the fire underneath, obviously showing the underfloor heating. So um, today we're looking at can I explain how the Romans took control? Um, so here's a little bit of information first of all and then we'll have a look at a video as well so after Boudicca's revolt the Romans took a firmer hold on southern Britain at first they punished the Britons by burning villages and farms then they began to govern more justly that means fairly to gain favor with more British chieftains they create grief and ruin and call it peace grumbled Calgacus a northern leader Southern Britain was peaceful. Now the Romans turned to the north and west, which was still free from Roman rule. Wales was rich in minerals that included gold, silver and copper. There was also lead and tin from which bronze could be made. Governor Frontinus and Agricola after him gained control of Wales in AD 70s. Agricola was a Gaul from southern France and one of Rome's best generals. He led an army into the mountains of Snowdonia and crushed the last British resistance. So they defeated the last of the British that were in Snowdonia. Um, and at the top there, the word revolt, it means um, obviously after Boudicca had led her army against the Romans, and obviously it, we know what happened there from last lesson. Um, so this was all happening after that, the Romans were starting to take over more parts of um, Britain. So the Romans founded a new fortress town at Chester from frontier forts. They sent out patrols to keep watch on the tribes. The army could swiftly end any rebellion. The Brigantes of the north had been friendly to Rome, but then turned against their queen and revolted. Emperor Vespasian, the soldier who had led the Roman attack on Maiden Castle, ordered fresh troops to Britain. The Brigantes were defeated and the Romans built a new army base at York. In AD 79, Agricola and his forces marched further north to invade Caledonia in Scotland. At the Battle of Mon Graupius in 84, his army defeated the Scottish tribes. To help, Britain, to help rule Britain, the Romans set up local government areas and covering roughly the old tribal lands. Each area had a council made up of chieftains and landowners who kept law and order and collected taxes. In this way, the Romans won the loyalty of British tribal leaders who realised that it was best for them to keep the peace with Rome. So the couple of bits that I've put in boxes there are just um, talking about forts. Obviously, that's one of our topic vocabulary words. So frontier forts would be castles like at the front of the towns where they would send out soldiers on patrol. So soldiers on watch to make sure that the tribes were behaving well and uh, looking out for any rebellion, which means people kind of trying to go against the rules and trying to break the rules. So they had these towns that would have a big fort and maybe even walls going around it. Like when we looked at Bath um, the other week and uh, we saw how it had some city walls going around the center of it, that would be to protect those important buildings in the center of the town. Okay, right, it's time for me to share something else. So I'm gonna switch screens to the internet if I can and this is where you might need the other link um, so let's have a look at what the Romans did for us let me just turn my volume up before I play it properly for you and let's make it full screen there we go what did the Romans do for us when the Romans invaded in AD 43 they really liked ancient Britain 
but they weren't too impressed with the ancient Britons. The Romans pretty much thought they were better at everything. They built big brick and stone buildings with central heating. They built sewage systems and paved straight roads that stretched right across the country to connect up all their new Roman towns. Before long, they built so much that Britain didn't look too different from Rome itself. Apart from the weather, of course. The Romans even brought animals like rabbits to Britain. And stinging nettles, too. The Romans also built temples to worship their many gods, like Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus. You've probably heard of them, because we've named our planets after them. Later on, the Romans decided to believe in just one god and introduced Christianity to Britain, too. Before the Romans arrived, there was no written language in Britain. They changed all that by teaching important Britons how to read and write, and how to speak the Roman language, Latin. And even today, 2,000 years later, a lot of our words come from Latin, like enormous and victory and lavatory. The ways we measure distances, miles, feet and inches, that's all Roman. We've got Roman numerals, which you can still see in a lot of places, like clocks. And coins, too. The Romans made using coins to buy things popular throughout the whole of Roman Britain, rather than just swapping one thing for another, like a sheep for a sword, for example. All in all, we owe a lot to the Romans, but don't tell them that. They're smug enough as it is. Okay. Uh, let me go back to our lesson. There we go. So, um, how did life change in Britain once the Romans arrived and settled then? So, we've just heard some things in that video um, about things that changed in Britain. So, you can pause the video now and just have a little think. You can jot them down if you want to. All the ways that Britain changed when the Romans settled. So, pause the video here. Okay, so I've just um, written down some ideas as well. So there were forts and soldiers on patrol to, de to defend against Celts who wanted to rebel against the Roman way of life. Um, we also have more roads that, oh, so that it was easier, oh my goodness, easier to get around uh, the country. There's an example of a Roman road with the cobblestones. And then also they brought Latin language, writing and Roman numerals. So the these uh, numbers that we see on some clocks are called Roman numerals. Um, and we heard there that, that they brought Latin was their language. They brought Latin to Britain. Some of our words today are still come from Latin origins and that people in Britain weren't writing until the Romans came. Um, so lots of things there that changed. And there was loads of other things too, like they talked about sewers and Obviously, we know that the houses were very different as well. So as a Celt, remembering that our uh, brave change maker skill this term is empathy, which means thinking about things from another person's point of view. As a Celt, how do you think it would have felt to have the Romans come along and change everything? So it might have been a positive thing. You, you might have thought, oh, well, you know, some like having sewers is obviously going to make it better. So it might be a good thing. But in other ways, it might be quite annoying to have all these Romans invading and changing everything. So I've thought of a few ideas. I thought maybe it would be annoying. Maybe it'd be a bit frustrating. You know, you've been living in England all this time and suddenly everything's changing. It'd be confusing. Suddenly there's lots of different rules. Um, but also maybe it would be exciting. Things are kind of getting better. Um, so you probably have like mixed emotions, mixed feelings about what was happening. So your task today is to write a diary as a Celt during the Roman invasion, and you're going to explain some of the changes and how you feel about it. So in my example here, I've put some words in red. These are the words that tell us like particularly how they took control and what things they were changing as that was happening. So try and include those red words in your writing as well. OK, so my example says, dear diary, today the Romans finished building the city walls. Now it feels like we are penned in like sheep. They patrol all day from their fort and punish any Celts who refuse to follow their rules. Many of our men are busy building the new road to Bristol. I suppose this will be useful, but I don't understand why they can't build it themselves. They have started teaching us their Latin words, but it is all so confusing to me. I can't make any sense of it. The numbers are even worse. They look like drawings of trees to me. 
Okay, so I've just done a few sentences, but I have included um, six ideas from our learning today about um, how the Romans took control, like the forts, the patrols, the city walls, and also things that were changing, like the new roads, the Latin words, the numbers. OK, so in your English book, if you've been doing your topic work at the back of your book, then you need to write the question for today. Can I explain how the Romans took control and then um, write your diary as a Celt? OK, so I look forward to seeing those on um, Class Dojo and that's it for me for now. So I will be back with you next week. OK, thanks and goodbye.